Where, what what happened, Ronnie? Were, were you just put in the second halves then, or did you go on the team, or were they going to loan you out? Or uh, the first meeting, I was naturally just in the second half, and I had two meetings in the second half, and because I'm doing the practice sessions, but they were clocking me all the time, and next thing. Dickie Harris was dropped and I was in and taking his place and I had another two weeks in reserve berth and then I was moved up into the team and I had another oh, two or three weeks and they made me number two partner with Norman Parker which was really terrific because riding with Norman I really and truly learned how to ride as far as English tracks were concerned. It was good. You, In those days you, you know after the war, well, the when did you go? What year did you go? 19... 1950. 1950. Yeah. That, that, there was a lot of old stars around at that time. There wasn't a lot of new talent around at that period of time. Yeah. But you got a lot of press. Did this surprise you? Well, to an extent. I mean, there were certain people that sort of... Well, they looked down on me, basically because I wasn't one of the clan. I was a little young fellow. I wasn't one of the old established guys. And if I got in their way, there'd be a little nudge from them at times. I'd go scattered. And one particular person, I won't mention who, but he had me four times off once right over the fence. So I just said, one of these days I'll get you. And I did. And he came up and he said, are we now quits? Well, he'd had me three times, I only had him once, but I said, OK, we're quits. But I didn't at the time, but I was then accepted into the clan with all the other guys. And they laid off me and I laid off them. It was quite good. In other words, it was a bit of a closed shop at that period of time, was it? Oh, definitely. A real closed shop. You had to be up in that top group or out. Mm. Yeah, I heard rumours that you were threatened that if you didn't behave yourself, they was going to break your legs and all kinds of... Wild oh, yeah. stories. Any truth in that? Yes. Uh, I can't mention names, I suppose. I was sitting in the pits at Newcross one night. Norman Parker's on one side, Jack Parker's on the other side. Jack is speaking across to Norman, ignoring me, and he says to Norman, tell your boy to slow down or I'm going to kill him. Yes, yeah, so that, they were making it hard for you. They were making it quite hard for you. And that was it. You had to keep beating them and well, basically beat them cleanly, not hit them or anything like that. And then they finally accepted you into the clan. So they, they, they backed off then? They yep. realised you were a bit special and they left you alone? Yep. I, well, they actually told me in words, I was accepted. But because I was accepted, I was in with them. I mustn't go charge into them and knock them off either. Just race, but race cleanly, which I wanted to do anyway. But then they would also race cleanly, and, and if I passed them, I passed them. They would accept that. Was it a, was it a monetary thing, or were they interested in world championships, or what? What was behind it? No, I think it was just a, a thing all over, open meeting, league, everything. It was just. Well, it was a strange thing. I was, it was more like a Blicken Union in actual fact, and it was hard to accept. But it paid divvies to, to be in it, and so you just accepted it. So they, they didn't expect you to throw races or anything, they just wanted you to race and not run into them, and they'd do the same with you? That's it. As long, because I mean, the first year I was over there, I was diving under people because I thought they were going too slow. And of course, when you dive under people, you hit people, knock a few people off every now and again. You don't do it deliberately, it's just because they're going slower than you and in the way, so point. But after that, I had to concentrate, even though they were still going slow, come in under them, but not knock them, and then get past them. Did you bend many bikes in your first year? One, which was quite good, I thought. <laughs> Did you bend yourself very much? Uh, yes, I've had quite a few broken bones. I didn't find this out for a long while afterwards. I've got a calcium deficiency and, well, someone could go like that with a hand, I might as well break my leg as well. And so even an average, everyday bang, 
I had the chance of breaking something where normally you just get up from it and walk away. When, when did it ever enter your mind that you could be world champion? Oh, it didn't really because I looked upon the world championship, well, it was just another meeting. Okay, if you won it, all well and good, but if you didn't, so what? Yeah, well, always next year. Kid, surely a kid of 17 that's getting all this press coverage and that, there must have been some time you think, bloody hell, I can be world champion sometime. Oh yes, you think of things like that. But first year I qualified, which was terrific, but that, that was just an honour to qualify, and especially to ride at Wembley. The second year it was still good, but the novelty wore off a little bit and then after that I, mean, I started thinking well maybe I could pull one of these off and it took another couple of years. What what was your feeling your first world final? A lot of people, how did you feel? Well basically to me it was well it was an anti-climax. I'd won it I wasn't really floating or anything else. I'd no, I, no, your first wheel final, not winning the first wheel final, the first wheel final you rode in, how did you feel that? Nervous. Being there, were you nervous, a lot of people? and yeah. did it, uh, How did it affect you? Because 90,000 people in Wembley yelling, and even when you're racing, you could hear that, and boy, no, that really and truly did affect you. And I was just lucky to get through the meeting in one piece in actual fact. How many, where did you get in your first world final? I don't really know, but I finished about ninth. You was, you was happy? Oh, I was very happy. I was happy just from the point of view of appearing at Wembley because I mean that is, well in those days it was the ultimate. You, your father was a very strong figure in your early life. Where, 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 what was his feelings on you riding and these fellas getting to you? Well, basically, like any dad or anything else, he would, he wouldn't push me, but encourage me as much as possible. And of course, naturally, through him, he got bikes and everything for me to start off with before I got established and could do these things myself. Did he he leave you alone to? learn to ride as you did or did he try to influence the way you rode because he had a completely different style no. to you? He well watch me racing all the time in his study and just every now and again just once in a blue moon he'd make a little suggestion but it wasn't a thing in which he said oh go out and do that he said I think if you try to do such and such it'll most likely work out a bit better and that I really and truly appear here because he didn't say go and do it. He said, "How about trying something?" And nine times out of ten, it worked. Well, he was a racer as well. You know, he, he may not have got to what you did, but your dad was always a racer. So, did you find it good when you're having a strife and people getting to you to have your dad around? Ah, uh, yeah, that is basically as a godsend. I mean, he was there for the first two seasons, and. Well, the first season, especially, um, diving under people and hitting people, I got my muscles all torn, and then got to be driven off in hot baths and all the rest of it, all the massages to be ready for the next meeting. If I hadn't had him in there helping me just to get to those places to start off with, I'd been in trouble. But there, well, when you're 12,000 miles away from home, just to have someone like that there with you is, is bloody mighty. Well, how did he feel, Ronnie, when they were, you know, you were bodil being bodily threatened, really? How did, what did he, how did he react to that? Well, basically it didn't worry me at all. No, him. How did it, how did it worry your dad? How did your dad oh. handle that? Did, was he, he upset and wanted to sort them out, or did he just, Ronnie, you've got to stand on your own two feet yep. or what? Basically that's what he'd done nearly all the time. He stood back but was there, but stood back and let me sort of choose my own course and bang, bang.